Good afternoon, sailors. This is Benjamin Kaminsky on behalf of Yachts International, largecatamaransforsale.com. And today we are going to be talking about Katana catamarans. More specifically, large Katana catamarans. Now, if you come to me and say, Ben, I want a large Katana catamaran, my response will probably be like, well, do you have in and around like a million bucks? And if your response is no, don't worry. You can do the most logical thing and buy a used one. And that is what we're looking at today. We're looking at a 2001 Katana 582 called Double Trouble. Now, despite this yacht being from 2001, she's only had a single owner, which is not exactly common, but it happens from time to time. Now, I know some of you may be saying, well, Katana, I'm not really a performance guy. And that's true, but Katana catamarans are not for everyone. It, takes a special kind of person to own a katana. Uh, if, uh, you know, Outremer is like a Lamborghini and Privilege is like a Rolls Royce, then katana is kind of like owning a Ferrari. And if you own a Ferrari, well, you're not just driving it to the grocery store. So here is double trouble. Without further ado, let's make our way on board. But before we do that, I'd like to point out something interesting about the Katana catamarans, which is if you notice, at the bow, the hull has a tendency to curve outward. This is called the tumble home, and it's actually a design that was originally created to armor warships against torpedoes. But like many happy accidents in naval architecture, it proved to be hydrodynamically efficient and has made its way into the modern age. So coming on board, we have a set of blackout curtains for shade and privacy. Enclosure for the hardtop. And as this is a performance cruiser, she uses a dual helm configuration, as well as many, many Harkin winches. Take a look at those sugar scoops. And in the helm station, you have your compass, B and G electronics, as well as your engine controls, and a nice wide steering wheel. We'll take a quick peek at the starboard mechanical space. The boat is equipped with dual 125 horsepower Yanmar diesels, as well as water maker. and a few air conditioning units. We have a dinghy with center console, bimini, and this dinghy is controlled with a hydraulic lift platform. Making our way forward, have our wind indicators, as well as engine controls and tachometers. Now underneath me right now is actually a spare cabin, and as well as nice wide teak seats for the bow. Split trampoline with adjustable jib cars. We'll just take a moment to admire the lines on this yacht. Very aggressive, befitting her performance. Beneath that, you have your chain locker as well as space for two fuel tanks and other storage. Now the cross beam on this boat is under intense load, so it's actually fabricated to be an integral part with the bowsprit. It has both a jib and Genoa as well as an attachment point for asymmetrical or code zero. Okay, here we have our second bow speed seat, as well as another storage locker for your Dometic, as well as sails and 
spare line. On top of the cabin, we have under a little under a kilowatt of solar energy. As well as a carbon fiber Park Avenue boom. We'll take a look at the rig as well. She's a spreaderless rig. Uses Kevlar as well. Making our way down the porthole, we have the second dagger board, second steering station, more winches, satellite mast, as well as gas grill. Now the lines on this boat, being a performance cruiser, are not exactly the same layout as you find on your typical charter catamaran. All of these lines are actually led under the cabin and then they can be controlled by this really massive Harkin electric. Take a quick look at the sofa. as well as a settee with a triangular table for alfresco dining. Now a lot of people talk about, you know, transition uh, between the cabin and the cockpit, but man, it is really, really nice and wide on this boat. <laughs> we have a nice large U-shaped galley It comes with some things which are not very standard on most cruising yachts. You have a dishwasher, a Miel no less, as well as your refrigerator, or freezer, oven, microwave, storage for all your utensils and pots and whatnot, and a dual basin sink. Kind of here we have a nav station which also has another feature I really like which is that in addition to simply being a nav station, chart plotter, navigational radio, it also doubles as a home office. You know, I wish more people had home offices in their boats. So, uh, especially if you know you're kind of a nomad and you work remotely, it's very convenient. Make our way into the first guest cabin. This is a split cabin, ideal for kids or guests that you know, don't want to necessarily sleep together. Comes with a its own head, sink, shower head, and toilet back there. <laughs> And this is a proper wet head, so everything is just designed to sort of drain to the bottom. Forward guest cabin, double berth. As well as you, as you may have noticed, uh, nice stereo system. Again, desk and another wet head. Have a nice curved sofa here if you don't want to die in alfresco. As well as electrical, AC, DC and amperage. DVD and Blu-ray Blu player, as well as a stereo in here. 
Now this is an owner version, so. We have the owner's suite, nice wide island berth. Small settee and desk. The owner's head has an enclosed shower, so this is a proper dry head. As well as a vanity. Storage for all your stuff and a dual basin sink. So that is Double Trouble. If you have any questions concerning the vessel, please contact the listing agent. As always, I don't have a SoundCloud, but feel free to like, subscribe, and keep watching for more videos. Thank you and hope to see you soon.